Oh boy, folks, this has been one crazy June, hasn't it? We've really got to talk about some really good animated films this month. We've talked about Across the Spider-Verse, we've talked about Elemental, we've talked about Ruby Gilman, and now we've got one more to talk about. And it's a big one. At long last, after years of waiting, I get to talk about Namona. And you have no idea how hyped I am to finally get the chance to talk about this film. There have been plenty of animated films that I've seen and will see this year that I've been excited for, but if there was a film that I was excited for the most this year, it was easily this. And this film has had one of the craziest production stories for an animated film ever, and it's one that I could probably fill an entire video with. But I do have a film that I need to review, and I don't want this video to be overly long, so I'll briefly explain the crazy production of this film in a nutshell. Nimona started off as a webcomic written by N.D. Stevenson. He initially wrote it as a college thesis project from 2012 to 2014, but the comic really took off and soon enough was able to get published as a graphic novel in 2015. Not long after it, the film rights to the novel were purchased by 20th Century Fox to be made as an animated film at Blue Sky Studios. I'm sure you all know who they were, but for those that don't, Blue Sky was the studio behind films such as Ice Age, Robots, Horton Hears a Who, Rio, The Peanuts Movie, and Spies in Disguise. Overall, a pretty solid studio with some really fun films under their belt, and one I really admired. After they had finished Spies, Nimona was bound to be their next film, to be released in 2020. Before it was pushed back to 2021, and then to 2022. Despite all those delays, it seemed like everything was going smoothly. But as I'm sure most of you know, the film hit a massive speed bump that almost killed it. That breaking news, the blockbuster Disney deal, the parent company of ABC buying many of the assets of 21st Century Fox. In 2019, 20th Century Fox was acquired by Disney, and all of their films and most of their subsidiaries would be merged into the Disney banner. And in that large acquisition was Blue Sky and Nimona. And for a while, it seemed like Disney was willing to have them on board and make them their third major flagship animation studio next to Walt Disney Animation Studios and Pixar. But then, the rug pull. In February 2021, Disney decided to shut down Blue Sky Studios, with all of their employees to be laid off and all of their projects to be canceled, including Nimona. I was completely shocked and outraged when that happened, and I still am, as it really seemed like Blue Sky was onto something special with Nimona, and it was almost nearly finished, with 75% of it done, and I know I wasn't alone. My good buddy Jeff started up an account on Twitter called the Save Nimona account, to help raise awareness of the film in the hopes that it would be saved by another animation studio considering that it was nearly done and had a lot going for it. But for a while, it seemed like that was it for the film dead in the water before it even had the chance to take off. Until April of 2022, when it was announced that the film had indeed been saved by Annapurna Pictures to be distributed on Netflix in 2023. I still remember that morning very vividly, and you have no idea how happy I was for the rest of the day knowing that that film was alive and would be finished after all, and also picked up from where Blue Sky left off. And after all those years of waiting and a crazy cancellation, it's finally arrived. And how was it? In a word, metal. But in all seriousness, I freaking loved this film. This was everything I wanted it to be and more, and it really feels so gratifying knowing this film actually met my very high expectations. In fact, this film is guaranteed to go down as being one of the very best animated films of the year. Considering we had a pretty stacked June with some new animated classics, it's really saying a lot. The story of the film follows a knight named Ballister Boltart, played by Riz Ahmed. Once promised to be a champion knight of the queen, he soon goes on the run when the queen is killed while knighting him and he is accused of murdering her. Sometime after the incident, Ballister soon meets Namona, played by Chloe Grace Moretz, who volunteers to be his sidekick and reveals that she is a shapeshifter that can take the form of different animals. Hoping to clear his name, Ballister and Nimona set off on a crazy journey through the Institute looking for answers leading to Ballister's framing while being chased by the Institute's top knight, Golden Loin, played by Eugene Lee Yang, and the Institute's leader, the director, played by Francis Conroy. Now, when it comes to film adaptations, I usually go into them not knowing much since I hadn't read the book beforehand. But this is a film where I actually had read the story, 
In fact, I read it way back in 2019, back when we knew Blue Sky was making the film. So I knew what to expect out of this film going into it. But even then, I was still amazed at how much the adaptation of the film blew me away. The film was directed by Nick Bruno and Troy Kwan, the same duo that also made Spies in Disguise, which happened to be one of my favorite Blue Sky films. And much like that film, they put a lot of great energy and comedy into the story to make it so entertaining. The film really gets going right from the start. It sets up the needed exposition with Ballister, Golden Loin, the director, and the queen, and as soon as the backstory is over and Nimona comes into the picture, it's just non-stop hilarity from there on out. It's a film that really cuts straight to the point and trims the fat while also remembering to have the time to breathe and not feel overly rushed and too energetic. And when it really gets emotionally cutting it deep, it truly feels earned. The sad scenes in this film really hit hard for me, and it really is a testament to just how strong the story is. Though the film isn't just emotions and energy, it also has some really hilarious comedy, and a lot of that mainly comes down to perfect timing and fantastic character interactions. One of my favorite jokes is a really great use of comedic editing right after Nimona meets Ballister, where she tells him he's gonna get arrested without her help, and then it immediately cuts to Ballister being thrown in a cell. The comic timing is simply perfect, and I was laughing and cheering during so many moments in the film. And I can't talk about this film's story without talking about the LGBTQ plus representation. And it really is a milestone in animation. This is a film that really is unashamed at being queer, and doesn't tap dance around the subject, and I couldn't have it any other way. In a weaker studio's hands, this is the kind of film that would have been censored to death, and had a lot of the trans parallels and the relationship between Ballister and Golden Loin toned down, and I'm so glad it wasn't. I know this is a film that really is going to mean so much to future generations that will grow up wanting to be loved and fit into the world. As far as the animation goes, this film really is a treat to look at. The film takes full use of the cel-shaded computer animation, and I just loved looking at it. It's simply dazzling, and there's a lot of great use of simple colors and its evocative lighting. And then there's the character animation, which is so energetic and crazy. This is one of those animated films where it's quite easy to tell the animators were having so much fun making it, as these characters move around and pop up like Looney Tunes characters and have insane expressions, and it was hilarious. Plus, the film throws a bit of variety to the mix, particularly one instance where the film uses subway wall tiles in the animation and makes it look like it's a flipbook. Nifty little stuff like that really just showed how much hard work the animators at Blue Sky and DNEG put into the film. As far as the characters go, they are very well written and emotionally complex, and a lot of that comes down to the vocal performances. My favorite character in the film is obviously the titular protagonist herself, Nimona. She's really chaotic and energetic and so unapologetically ashamed to be a shapeshifter, and she has some great chemistry with Ballister, as well as a very sad backstory. And a large part has to do with Chloe Grace Moretz's performance, as honestly, I think she might have given the performance of her career here. I've always loved her, and she's been in many films that I've liked, but she has been put in some pretty bad films that really have wasted her talent. Here, though, she really gets to shine and makes this character her own. Her voice truly disappears into Nimona, and it's really a performance I hope to remember during award season. Riz Ahmed is also great as Ballister, being complex and trying desperately to clear his name and prove his innocence, while also seeing his struggle at being rejected, especially by his old lover Golden Loin. And I really liked how flushed out he is, and his struggles at believing the Institute and the slimy director, or believing Ballister and his crazy sidekick. These characters really are so well written and funny, and I just loved watching every single one of them. I could go on and on about how much I love this film, but I think you get the point. The point is, you need to see Nimona. This is an animated film that really will go down as being one of the best, not just of this year, but even the decade. The story is energetic and emotional, the animation is dazzling and lovely, the characters are funny and fleshed, and the themes are groundbreaking and deep. It should go without saying that I adored this film, and I cannot wait to watch it again and again and again. As far as whether or not I think it's the best animated film of the year, well, I'll have to see as its big competition is across the Spider-Verse, so I'll have to think about that. I'll have an answer by December, but for now, I'm going to give Nimona a 10. I am so grateful this film was saved, and it feels so great to say that. While we'll never know what else Blue Sky had in store for the rest of the 2020s, I am very excited to see what Annapurna does next in animation, as I know it's truly going to be exciting. To the Annapurna, I wish you all the best, and to Blue Sky, thank you so much for this film, 
and all you did in animation. As it says in the film, you will never die. But can you just be you? I don't follow. 